boxing pay. Many others end up with nothing. In The Shadow Boxer, we follow the fortunes of a British world champion who was a national hero when he retired. But then he was driven back to the ring at the age of 37, when most boxers have long since given up. The lightweight championship of the world. Introducing from Scotland. He's wearing plaid trunks. He weighs 133 and a half pounds. The lightweight champion of the world, Ken Buchanan. Buchanan. Thirteen years after he won that world lightweight championship, Ken Buchanan is back in training on the Edinburgh council estate where he now lives. Once he was one of the most stylish punchers in the history of boxing. Now he's almost 38, greying a little, and probably the oldest fighter still boxing in Britain. At his age, the risk of serious damage to brain or eyes must be high. But Ken says he has no choice. He's in debt, and boxing is his only way out. I'm certainly not down. I'm not at the top, but I'm not down. I'm sort of bouncing about in the middle. But I'm quite happy, you know what I mean? I'm not down, I'm quite happy. I, you know, I'm sorry I have to go back to boxing. I have to go back to boxing, but I'm just doing, I'm just doing what I think I know best to make money at, and boxing is the thing. Why are you sorry that you have to go back to it? Because of the fact that I built up such a big reputation and done things that no other fighter in Britain's ever done in their life. In the history of boxing, I've got awards that no other British fighter's ever won from America. I mean, I'm the only fighter in Britain in the history of boxing that ever won the, the Fight of the Year award. You know, things like that. And I was so well respected. And then I went back. And I'm certainly not going to do my career uh, any good. I know that myself. Because who can, when you've been through it your, young, your younger years, who can expect you to go back and be half as good as what you were when you were champion? Now the former world champion, once affectionately known in Edinburgh as the scuffler with a muffler, works as a joiner. It's a trade he learnt before hitting the boxing heights. The hundred pound a week wages are a far cry from the big money he earned as a boxer, but Ken's just pleased to have a job. His employer and sponsor is Edinburgh club owner Eddie Ramsey, but even he wants Ken to retire from the ring. I'd like to see him retire because I simply don't want to see him being hurt because he is, getting, he is 37 year old and uh, he is past the boxing boxing age and uh, I think to see him being hurt the only way to stop boxing is to hang your gloves up. Have you asked him to do that? Yeah, I've asked him two or three times and he obviously says well I'm feeling really well inside myself I'll just maybe do another two or three fights and call it a day. After work Ken trains at the same backstreet gym where he began boxing as a boy of eight. Uh, just a pure accident at Christmas time a nan gave him a present of a pair of small boxing gloves. Could have been cricket bat, could have been anything. Just happened to be a boxing gloves. And he decided he wanted to go into the boxing. He'd only been here a matter of weeks when his trainer in the club, he said, there's a future champion there. Now, he didn't know I was his father at the time. And I was surprised. I said, he's only been here a few weeks. I know, but he's a natural. By his teens, Ken was already demonstrating his extraordinary skill in the ring. Quitting his trade as a joiner, he turned professional. Within five years, he won the Scottish, British and European crowns. And in 1970, his first world title fight against Ismail Laguna in Puerto Rico. And a sign of desperation from Laguna. He doesn't know how to nail Buchanan. Well, that's it. They're certainly pleased to hear the bell. I was completely shattered after the fight. I was absolutely knackered. But, um, you know, I lost about eight, nine pounds during the fight. I mean, I'm a lightweight, not like a heavyweight. If a heavyweight loses that, it's okay. But, you know, 15 rounds in the... Uh, you know, you imagine 100 not degrees in Spain and having to fight 15 rounds for the World Championship and a guy wanting to knock your head off. You know, I knew by the time I'd got back to the dressing room I was World Champion. The yeah, tears were just running down my face because, you know, the person I wanted to be there was my mom, like, you know, and um, she, you know, that's what she always wanted to see me, like, being a world champion. My dad and I, we just sort of held each other, bloody well greeting, like, you know, 
Um, I think it was just a natural reaction, like, you know. Um, it wasn't any champagne parties and thinking of the high life, you know. It's just simply I, I'd done it and I wanted to get back home. A year later, the return fight in boxing's most famous stadium, Madison Square Garden, New York. The referee looks at the left eye of Buchanan. It's not a pretty sight. Buchanan's face a crimson smear. And the blood is on the trunks of Laguna. Again, the referee looks at that eye. Buchanan's eye is in terrible shape, but he's doing well in the fighting. I've got a split in my eye. And I mean, that split needed um, 11 stitches to pull it together. And that's just an idea as to how big, how long the stitch was. You know, went from there right round. And I was cut under this eye. But by this time, the time this eye got cut, my eye was shut anyway. Buchanan, knowing he's in trouble, with that eye, is trying for a knockout desperately. It's an angry sight. Here's a close-up of uh, Buchanan's face. You can see that blood. The, the doctor is in there. There's Dr. Campbell looking at the ministration. My, my, my cornerman, Eddie, done a tremendous job. He slipped my eye with a razor blade, and we got all the blood out and all the information and everything out, and it was just a matter of hoping that the referee would let the fight go on. Slitting your eye with a razor sounds like drastic action. Well, it was. It had to be the drastic action. If I hadn't been, if I hadn't done that, I would have got stopped. And um, I, I was more concerned about the fact that if he stopped the fight and giving it to him, because I was, I had him points. Head's bleeding again around that eye. I had to dwell on it, but it's part of the drama. The bell will sound in a moment. And there it is. The boys throw their arms around each other. I guess each boy thinks he's won, and here it is. Here it is, Johnny Addy. Judge Tony Castellano. Eight, six, one even, Buchanan. One for Buchanan. Referee Jimmy Devlin, nine to six, Buchanan. Buchanan is the winner and still champion. Letterman, lightweight champion of the Buchanan. world. Ken a very Buchanan. fine lightweight champion of the world. Ken Buchanan, world lightweight champion, took the Sportsman's Award, the first British boxer to win and retain a world title in the USA since Kid Lewis. The Sports Writers Association awarded Princess Anne the title for her success in the European three-day equestrian event. Two champions dried out some fancy footwork on the dance floor. Pushing 40, the fancy footwork is slower now. Too old for a license to box, Ken's next fight is an unofficial bout in a small hall. But what did happen to all the winnings? We didn't have big swimming pools in the back garden and so on as in the house and that, like, you know, we had a, we had a lovely house. And that was the main thing. And also, it managed to get me a hotel. It's two world title fights, but I'm in about a quarter of a million dollars. That's a fair bit of money then. What's happened to all that money? Well, he bought a hotel. And unfortunately, he was a champion boxer in the ring, but he wasn't a champion businessman. Ken's marriage also fell apart leading to an expensive divorce. But Ken's very close to his children, Karen and Mark. His son now watches Dad train, but Ken doesn't want Mark to box. I, I pretty well put him up at, like, you know, I show him all the rotten photographs, you know, my burst eyes and bad hands and burst noses and lips and that. And I take him down to the gym of every fight. And, uh, you know, if anything goes wrong there, like, if I get hurt by that, like, you know, I'm quite happy in some respects because, I mean, it's going to deter him from going into boxing. I don't want to see him box. I'm not saying boxing's a bad thing or anything like that, but he doesn't have any go for boxing. He's no interested at all. And I don't want him to take up boxing because of the fact that his dad was a, a world champion. At 69, Tom Buchanan still helps his son train though he doesn't welcome his comeback. The prospect of Ken's next match, a small unlicensed fight in London's East End, is a cause of some sadness. When you've been at the top like he was, 
and he's down to fighting eight round fights in small halls. It really hurts. He had always said he would quit at the top. And when he retired in 75, he was still undefeated European champion. And then things didn't go quite right with him and he made a comeback. Unfortunately, he stayed out the ring for four years, almost five years before he made his comeback, and that's a terrible long time. He has lost fights to some fighters that once upon a time couldn't have hit him with a long handle brush. I'm frightened he may get hurt. I never had that fear when he was in his prime before he retired. That was the funny thing. People just say to me, well, you're not frightened if someone will get hurt in a ring. And I say, well, I never see him getting hurt. You're helping Ken now make his, his comeback. Mm -hmm. uh, his, that's his second comeback after a period of retirement. What do you think about that? Oh, I wish it never happened. London's Old Kent Road, above the Thomas a Beckett pub, the way in for the fight. Right, on Kent, why? Kent stone, Kent stone two. Kent stone two. Yeah. King Buchanan, ten stone two pounds. Ken's opponent is Jimmy Revy, 32, and a former British featherweight champion. Jimmy Revy, ten stone one and a half pound. Oh, I love it. The promoter is Joe Carrington, a dealer in bankrupt stock from Romford. The York Hall in London's East End is a far cry from Madison Square Garden. The days of the star dressing room are gone. Ken has to share, like everyone else. At his age, the risk of one fight too many is obvious. The purse, £1,250, with half of that going in expenses. Oh, he's here as well. Oh, they've got a gang here, they know it. Well, they've been cunning clans here, haven't they? I'll tell you where you've got Charles. Yeah, Charles. Yeah. 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 Rocky, 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 if you lost this fight, would I you still return? I can't hear what you're saying. <laughs> I don't like talking like that. I know when I'm just about to go into the ring.
throw a double left jab and throw a left hook slide. Watch for your chance. Head on, you're going to throw. You're missing, it was crossing. End of round six. Once again, Ken's eye is bleeding badly. Sponge, a quick sponge. Soak it. Gum shield. Gum shield. Now, shorten that right hand, son, OK? Ken has been beaten in four of his last five fights. This one, he can't afford to lose. I can't wait away, Johnny, but I was trying too hard. Oh, don't care, mate. Hey, trying too hard, mate. Come on. This is my son. Aye, aye. Aye. Well, I feel like we was here all the time. It's just that we was throwing a right hand just too wide or too low. You caught the right hands early on. Before you went in, you said you were fighting for your life. Did it feel like that when you were in there? Oh, Christ, aye. Well, I, was, well, I didn't come out looking like this every day, like, you know. Um, I certainly was fighting for my life in a lot of respects, yeah. I was fighting for Ken Buchanan. You're and, Ma and Mark and Karen. Oh, aye. Okay. Really? Ah, come on. You know, who's still there? Buchanan is the winner and still champion. Champion of Buchanan. A very fine lightweight champion of the world. Well, that fight as it happened should be the last of Ken Buchanan's career. Last month, he decided he'd had enough and announced, you might think wisely, his retirement. Good luck to him.